Hi, it's Dawson here from EFT Universe, and we'll talk today about energy and matter. Now, we're very used to seeing and looking at solid matter. We know that matter is composed of atoms and molecules, and we can describe their chemical structures. But most of what we think of as solid matter, in fact, is energy when boiled down to its smallest particles. In fact, we think of as heavy molecules, in fact, maybe no more than strings of energy vibrating at a high speed, whereas light molecules might be those same strings vibrating at a slower speed. So string theory tells us now that it's highly likely that even things that seem as solid as my book Mind to Matter might in fact be energy. This insight is not new. Albert Einstein said a century ago that the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. Brilliant inventor Nikola Tesla in the late 1800s said that if you want to understand matter, think in terms of vibration and energy. So what we think of as solid matter, including our bodies, in fact exists in these energy fields. And the amazing thing I talk about in the book is that by shifting the energy, we shift matter. Think about that. By shifting energy, we shift matter. How do you shift energy? When I sit here and think of you and then move into my heart and speak from my heart, my energy shifts. I hook myself up to an EEG brain monitor and you'll literally see the whole way my brain processes that energy shift as I move from the focus of speaking from my head to speaking from my heart. So as we shift our thoughts, our consciousness, our energy, we're literally changing molecules in the world around us. Now, one of the most interesting figures I talk about in my book, Mind to Matter, is an 18th century German philosopher and mathematician called Ernest Cladney. Cladney had a very strict father who wouldn't let the boy go play outside in the sunshine until he'd finished every last stitch of his schoolwork. But he became very, very interested in science. He gained two degrees, one in philosophy, one in, math one in uh, law, and equipped with this storehouse of knowledge, he then began to experiment with sound. He had a super sensitive ear. He could make out minor differences between frequencies, differences too small for the average person to detect. And so, so Clanny began to look at this whole way in which frequency was affecting matter. He designed an ingenious experiment where he took a plate, a metal plate, a lot like this one over here, he would take a violin bow, draw it across the plate, he would take sand and sprinkle the sand on the plate, just like that, and he found that as you'd produce different frequencies in that plate with the bow, that the matter of that sand would shift. Nowadays, we don't need a, a violin bow to do that. I'm using something called an online tone generator, and I'll show you what these different tones sound like. We'll start with low tones, we'll go up to high tones, and these tones are measured in a unit of measure called Hertz, or HZ. And a Hertz is simply a unit that means the number of waves per second. So a sound at one hertz means that it has one wave per second. Two hertz, two waves per second. Four hertz, four waves per second, and so on up the scale. We'll start at the very low end of the scale here. So we'll start with one hertz, one cycle per second over here. I'll play the sound through the tone generator, and you won't hear much because the human ear can't hear these really, really low frequencies, 14 hertz, 22 hertz, 23 hertz, 25 hertz. But even though your ears can't hear them, your cells can hear those frequencies and your brain produces those slow frequencies. Now, as we go up the scale here, we're moving into audible sound. You hear something, and this is a over here like a speaker, a loudspeaker attached to the bottom of the plate that's projecting that sound into the plate. 
when I touch the plate, I can feel it vibrating as I change the tone over here. Now, perhaps you can hear that faintly, and you can see the sand grains changing as I get into those higher frequencies. Now again, as you see the number of cycles per second rising, you can hear the sound changing. And turn the volume down here a little bit. Because when you get into these frequencies, you can hear the sound quite audibly. And when you get to the high frequencies, they sound pretty screechy, like a whistle. And finally, moving into 5,000 hertz and above, 6,000, 7,000 hertz, you can't hear a thing. Now, if your dog or your cat or your pet bat, if you have one, was in the room, they'd be hearing lots of sound at these frequencies. Some animals can pick up really high frequencies, like in this range, that are inaudible to the human ear. So, let's now play around with what happens to matter when frequency changes. Let's start down here at those slow frequencies. I'm also going to put in earplugs, just so when I get to the higher frequencies that I don't deafen myself. I'm going to spread sand on my cladney plate. Now, as you can see, this matter of the sand is totally random. It's just falling where it will. It's all over the place, including making a mess on the floor where my wonderful housekeeper, Gemma, will have to vacuum it up. <laughs> Science is messy sometimes. And so now as I play those tones, you'll see energy shifting matter. symmetric pattern produced in the sand by the vibration of that particular frequency. Now we'll go a little higher up the scale and you'll see how different vibration, different energy produces big changes in matter. There's 426, Here's 463, a totally different pattern. And again, I'm not moving those molecules around. They're being configured purely by energy. Energy is changing matter. We'll go now to a higher frequency of 597 hertz. And again, a different and more complex pattern. So a highly symmetrical pattern produced by that energy signature. Now up to 975 hertz. And again, changes in energy produce changes in matter.
So order is happening in matter based on energy. The energy is primary, it then produces order in matter based on the quality and the frequency of the energy. Now we'll go to 2007 hertz. And it's only different that pleasing and symmetrical pattern at that frequency. Here's 2128 hertz. Now again, nothing happens, even a few hertz up or down, but I hit the right frequency, 2128 over there, and matter shifts in response to energy. to 11 hertz. And again, tiny changes in energy produce big changes in matter. It doesn't take a lot of energy or a big shift in energy to produce a completely different configuration in physical matter. Twenty-eight oh six hertz, a totally different pattern. And then finally we'll go to 34.77 and just watch that a change again in response to a change in energy. So, isn't that an amazing demonstration of how energy shapes matter? And the take-home message here is that you are a being of energy. You are a being of vibration. Your thoughts have vibration. Your experiences have vibration. Your memories have vibration. Your cells are configured, shaped, and shifted by vibration. And when you change your vibration, you can literally change the way your cells are. I had a friend recently who was diagnosed with cancer. She was diagnosed with a large lump in her right breast. It was five centimeters across. That's about two inches across, a large lump. It had also metastasized to her armpit, so all the lymph nodes under her right armpit had filled up with cancer cells. She had three spots of inflammation on her right lung. It looked as though the cancer had moved away from the primary tumor site and was metastasizing and traveling through her lymph glands to different parts of her body. She was also really worried. She emailed me and said, Dawson, I've had a gene test and I have eight defective genes, some of which predisposed me to breast cancer. So now she had fear going for her as well. She actually, though, declined all conventional treatment and decided to work not at the level of matter, but at the level of energy. So in March, she got that diagnosis, a large lump in her right breast, her lymph nodes swollen, full of cancer cells, and three spots on her right lung. She focused on energy. She did qigong. She did EFT tapping on her acupressure points. She did energy medicine work. She cleaned up her diet. She got rid of every single stressor in her life. She turned off her alerts. She quit watching the news. She resigned from her nonprofit board she was volunteering for. And she did everything she possibly could to shift her energy. When she went back to the hospital two months later, that large mass, five centimeters across, 
had shrunk to 1.4 centimeters. That's a little over half an inch across. Huge shrinkage of that tumor and her lymph nodes were clear. Another couple of months, I'll focus on energy, and matter responded. She was totally cancer free. I would invite you to really focus on what you can do in your life to shift into positive states of energy. How can you shift your energy? How can you shift your heart? How can you shift to compassion? How can you shift to joy? I teach meditation, I teach tapping, I teach various methods, practical ways of changing energy. And I know that as you take advantage of yourself as this glorious energy being, that you turn mind to matter. The software of your mind becomes the hardware of your brain and the hardware of your body. And you shift and turn different energies into different matter in your cells. Imagine if 4422 is the frequency of love and you're generating that frequency in the matter of your body every day. Imagine when you have the frequency of anger. Maybe that's 1412. And you then change your energy and suddenly you go from this incoherent, miserable feeling into this beautifully ordered state. That's the magic of mind to matter and using energy as a way to make yourself healthy and happy. So whenever you're confronted with any kind of challenge, whether it's psychological, relational, career, work, money, use energy. Ask yourself, how can I change my energy and change my life by addressing the energy component of whatever I face now? Thank you and bless you. And I can't wait to be in this space of energy to matter with you in the future.